Yo, it's your boy AJ. I'm here with Rays. So we're going to talk about Summer League, our full, full reactions, what we really thought about the Summer League, and then we're going to get into the two-way situation where Aquan Gray got cut. <laughs> so Armani Brooks signed. Armani Brooks signed, but two ways, straight up to two, I mean, straight up to um, Summer League, like, I was very proud of this team, the way they fought. Um, like I said, we we fought. We fought this, this Summer League, and like I said, we went we were this close. I mean, we took the Cavs to the brink. We took the Cavs. This is the champs we were playing against in that semifinal game. We took the Cavs to the brink, and we almost had them. I mean, DDJ was pretty solid this summer league. Jalen, I mean, he had his troubles though. Jalen Wilson was, we know how he's the Nets' favorite. Right Jalen now. Wilson, Jalen Wilson was phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Jalen Wilson. I mean, he was just incredible. Um, we we weren't expect. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting him to play like this, um, and to make second team. To make second team was very big for him. And just the shooting is what surprised me the most. Because I think when I watched his film, I was like, oh, he reminds me of Jimmy Butler, Josh Hart. You know, I don't play. I don't never play outside my game. I get to the rim. I'm going to rebound, play make sometimes. But I'm going to take my shot sometimes. But when he was open for three, he was hitting. And I'm like, whoa, when did Jalen Wilson become a um, 40% three-point shooter, bro? Like, yeah. <laughs> He was really good during the summer league, bro. I really enjoyed watching him play. Um, oh, who was next? Oh, Armani. Armani. We're gonna get to Armani a little bit later, but Sniper Brooks Armani was so clutch this summer league. Incredible shooting, and we talked about this a little bit on stream. Like he went to the Rockets. He had up and down years. Some years he would shoot well. Some years he would just be bad. But he took advantage of this year. Like well, he was like, I'm coming to this summer league. And I'm making a team. He was on a mission. Um, but what did you? What was your biggest take from summer league, bro? Um, about from the Nets' point of view. I mean, I know some people don't really care. They don't want to like value summer league. Personally, oh, I value yeah, oh, summer, league. summer league. Oh, it's yeah, the summer yeah. league. Yeah, but... I know I don't live or die by summer league, but I still value it because you're playing against pro talent. You're playing against second year guys. You're playing against. Um, it's not like you're playing against no college. I mean. You're playing against guys that have fallen in the NBA and playing in a summer league, like G League guys. It's not like you're playing scrubs. But you are you're pl you are playing pros and you're playing guys who have made it to this level. You're not playing college level talent. You're not playing like you're yeah. not playing like the OTE talent, like like the Thompson twins were playing. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I do value it. But what was your biggest take from um the Nets summer league? I mean, going from here, where do you see? Um, I guess. I guess that those top four guys, uh, DDJ, Jalen Wilson, Armani, and then um, who am I missing? I guess I guess you could put Kenley Chandler in the conversation and Raekwon Gray, but you know, I, I know a lot of people like Matt Lewis too. But what was your biggest take from summer league? Um, well, Jalen Wilson looked like a guy who can come in and actually get rotational minutes for our for our team. Yeah. That was that was really good because I think ultimately when we when we went into the summer league, I don't think anyone thought that. Um, Jalen Wilson would look. I, I don't know if people actually thought that Jalen Wilson would look way better than Noah Clowney, like oh, way better. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think. I didn't. Th I don't. I don't know if people actually thought that Jalen Wilson would look like the best player on the team going into playing the summer league, but he did, and it was. I was very surprised. Like I was very happy with the way he was. He was taking his shots and doing and doing everything. Like in that first game, it really stood out to me, and it really like. It, 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 I started to notice like how good he might be able to be for this team because the way he was able to completely swift sh uh, shift gears and switch how that game was looking because that first game we were down we were down bad that was some of the worst basketball I've ever watched yeah. and he completely turned the game around he was he he, he was taking it to the rim and he was and he's a good rebounder I, I was very proud of Jalen Wilson I think he'll get uh I think he'll get minutes for this team somewhere in the future. But and then we talk about Armani Brooks who got his contract, uh, his, also a shooter and he was clutch too. Like the the yeah. shots he was hitting was was great and he was a big part in why the Nets were almost almost made it to the um championship game. Cause talk he, about he was a, clutch. Talk about Noah Clowney, bro. I forgot we got we just because we were texted before this and we saw the Brick Muse. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Brick Muse is an account on Twitter that really talks about a whole, all the ass players that um, <laughs> are getting statistics. He posts all the ass stats. But um, they posted Noah Clowney today. I don't know if y'all can see this. 20 fouls, 
<laughs> seven field goals made. Now his actual three point percentage was four for seventeen. I think Brick uh, Brick News gassed it. It was four for seventeen, but <laughs> they said possibly the worst summer league showing of any first rounder. What was your? I mean, we all had not me. I didn't really had expectations for Noah, but, but we didn't we didn't think he'd go in and ass. look awful. Yeah, it was gonna be this bad. We didn't think he was gonna be like this bad. <laughs> like, no, we I like like like, like, I, like it, it was just like uh, it was it was bad. But ultimately, yeah. like I'm I'm not I don't I wouldn't necessarily say I'm worried because like it is summer league and he is going in, but. It was the way he kind of approached the game, and it was he just looked very hesitant, yeah. and he didn't really. It didn't really seem like he knew what he was doing, and offensively, he was just kind of standing at the three point line and not really doing anything besides sitting at the three point line, and that was an ultimate problem with me. And I said this in the in the first stream, and I said this in the other streams that my problem with Noah Clowney is not that he's not making his three point shots, but it's it's that he's not doing anything else. Like if yeah. you're shooting, I'm I'm happy with you shooting shots, but if you're missing them, I don't mind if you continue to shoot them. But like, don't just continue to shoot shots, especially if they're not going in. He wasn't moving anywhere on offense at all. Like he yeah. just, it was just a three point shot. And defensively, he wasn't. It, it, he didn't have the best performance either. Like there were there were there were players that were getting that that had their way with him. But yeah. I also I'm also like like I said, I'm not insanely worried because although it, you know it is still. It is still summer league, and we've seen stars, and we've seen great players not have the best summer leagues. But you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna judge based off performance, it was disappointing to say the least. Yeah. But I'm not necessarily worried, and I think Noah Clowney can still be a good player. It's just a matter of how it's long it's will gonna it be take a long time. For, how, how long will it really take for him to be able to make to even make the rotation for this team? You know, you never. I, I just don't know with that. So. We'll he's see. Definitely it, a project. Have at least a year in the G League, yeah, but that was what that's what we he was like going into the go when we drafted him. He was going to be a project because his stat, his stats weren't honestly great, and um, you know he's a he's an eighteen year old coming out of college, coming yeah. uh, coming out of one year of college. Like Jalen Wilson was at four years of college. Yeah, the thing that just like upset me the most, like, like you said in the beginning, was just the way he came out, like the. It wasn't like a, a sense of urgency. Like, this is your moment, bro. You take this moment and you show the coaches, yo, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And he just didn't have that for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's gonna not going to eventually have that. But I just wanted to see that, you know, more tools in your bag. Like, show us something. You know, you said you were going to show us something. You were picked uh, 21st pick. You were, like, He was our first pick. Yeah, he was our so first pick that you were first round guaranteed pick. Like, you was, like, I wanted you to show us a little bit more. But like I said, we all know he was a project. He's 18. We're gonna give him time. We're gonna pray for him, wish him the best. Hopefully, he you know to gets his stuff together and he makes a run and gets better. Um, we all right. So going to the next thing, a two way contracts. The Nets gave Jalen Wilson a two way contract before the summer league began, and he definitely earned it. So Jalen Wilson, clear two way. Now, Raekwon Gray was given a two-way before um, Summer League. I think last year, at the end of the year, he was given this two-way contract. The Nets literally just waived him, uh, I think, probably like two days ago. Yeah, the, the Armani, the, the us giving Armani a two-way contract and Raekwon Gray getting waived happened on the same day. Yeah, so they literally just said, Raekwon, you're out of here, and Armani, you're in. And there's so, still a two-way spot available. Yeah, and there's one more two-way left. So those are the two two-ways. What is your opinion on the Raekwon Gray getting waived? Um, basically, imagine imagine saying thinking you're set for the year and then getting waived immediately. It's right it's after. too it's too bad, but ultimately, like it's it, it is whatever. It's not like Raekwon Gray really had a had a, had a great performance in the summer league, and yeah. ultimately, that was the time for him to really look good. Because the thing is, Raekwon Gray had a whole year. Really in the in the G League, I'm not I, honestly. It may he may have had two years with us. I think yeah. Rickon Gray has been in the summer league for two years, or in the in the G League for two years. And for him not to like look like he should look like Isaiah Mobley realistically with how long he's been in the G League. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. But he did he didn't, and he came off the bench and he didn't look that, and he didn't look like that, which is unfortunate. Um, but and but you know with him with him getting waived, it's not like it's not like it was a bad move or whatever. It was it was whatever. Yeah. Um, Armani Brooks deserved his two way though, and I still think there's still a two way spot left available. One thing that kind of sticks out to me though is that 
you know, they, with with the way DDJ played, we didn't give him the qualifying offer, and he's not going to get a ca- guaranteed contract because he didn't play well enough to in the in the summer league to get that. So he's probably gone as well. Yeah, yeah, that's the sad part about it because I'm a DDJ fan, and I think he'll get a contract from another team, but not, I don't know. Like you said, I'm not he sure might, if he's he going to get a guarantee. We we might just opt him in for a two way. He might just be our two way guy. He might just yeah, be on two way for another year. I don't want the Nets to. I'm not saying I don't want DDJ because I want DDJ, but that third two way, I feel like shouldn't it be somebody you, like we're gonna use like as a shouldn't it be a center or power forward? Like I'm just talking about from another guy in a G League or another you know what? Guy from another I, team. I, I I feel like I feel like um I feel like that's probably the best approach to take is to get someone from a different team because surely yeah. there's surely there's guys out there that raised eyebrows and that's worth picking up on the team because I. Th- I think after like all of this, I still don't think like I thought this even last year, even when we converted him to a standard contract at the end of the year, I don't think DDJ will be able to peak with us. And I think it is ultimately better if he does get moved on because I don't like I said, I don't think he'll peak with us. I don't think he'll Yeah. Get, I want him to go somewhere and get minutes. Here. Yeah. I want him somewhere to go to and get ton of minutes, ton of uh opportunity because I don't think especially with this staff or Jacques Vaughn, I don't think he's going to give him the best opportunity to succeed. He was, there were some moments, I remember I went to a game um, this year and he put in Drew Smith over DDJ. And I'm like, bro, Drew Smith just got here. Why are you putting him, him in first before DDJ? And I think it was like a, one of those games where people were hurt and it was out, but people were out. But I'm like, what? So if DDJ can find another place and get minutes, uh, I pray that he does. And I think he has talent. I think he should be in NBA, but We'll see you going forward, man. But make sure you guys hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. We'll be back. Um, more content coming soon. Put in the comments what other content you guys. Who was your favorite in Summer League? What do you guys see about all these prospects we talked about in Summer League? And hit that like button. We'll be back. It's Nest Kingdom. <laughs>